we take a look at just about every miniature in my collection and review the pros and the cons of just about every miniature company in existence today on Dungeon Craft. Welcome to Dungeon Craft. I'm Professor Dungeon Master, and this channel is about playing the ultimate game of D&D. And I'm Deathbringer. Level up your game by subscribing and click the bell icon so you'll be informed when we upload new videos every week. One of the things that separates Dungeon Craft is I include a lot of shots of my models to illustrate my ideas or story concepts. These models have taken me years to accumulate and paint, and I frequently get asked questions about the identity of the model, which model company makes them. So patrons have asked for a gallery walk and I invited my painting buddy, Adhesive Tom, friend of the channel, to accompany me and give some of his insight. So here we go. Let's take a look at our models. And the first models up, Kingdom Death Monster. And Tom is with me and Buddy the Cat is in the background. Yeah, these are a real pain in the ass to assemble. I remember that. Well, that's why you're Adhesive Tom. They, uh, it was not fun. They were much larger uh, in scale than the other stuff, than the uh, Reaper and bones and stuff like that. It's 30 millimeter scale. So, is it? Yeah, 30. so it is larger. For these, I looked at a lot of Caravaggio, a lot of religious art. Oh, interesting. Because that subconsciously you painted that as Ginger and Marianne. I Even have, the color I, scheme on the dresses is. A... I never, <laughs> I have never thought of that. That's very astute. Subconsciously, it may be true. Gray, monotone gray, huh? except for the blood. Yeah, it starts out as it started out as a, a medium gray and gradually layered up to be lighter. That's There's that gore. It's like uh, is it the Vallejo? No, I didn't use Vallejo gore. I used uh, I mixed Tamiya clear red. Ah, Testers uh, is it Testers Tamiya yeah. clear red. And that string of guts was made with Uhu glue. It's a, a German. I think I'm pronouncing it right. Oh, Uhu yeah, I remember glue. that. It took a long time to come. This was a tough one. Do you remember pinning this one? How oh, my God, it? that was a pain in the ass, yeah. Yeah, the model that they when it came out of the box, it just wouldn't stand upright. Yeah, you had to pin it, drill a little hole in the foot. That was a real pain. I forgot all about that. This is the... Manhunter? Manskinner? Well, I called him the Manskinner in the Caves of Carnage video. This is the Butcher. The Butcher. And he's got the skins of his victims hanging off him, stretched over his armor. Another pain in the ass on the glue together. So this is the King's Man. And I'm particularly proud of the, the colors I achieved here with the cloak. It started as a oh, wow, yeah. sort of beige-ish beige tan, and I gradually lightened it to linen white. Yeah, that is outstanding. What makes this high level of detail possible is slightly larger miniatures coming in multiple pieces. So this miniature has three different pieces of hair and each strand needed to be painted separately. So although these miniatures are a challenge to assemble, they're unquestionably the best sculpted miniatures I've ever worked with. That lantern's so luminescent looking, that's great. Dark green paint and gradually lightening it I think it was Reaper Moot Green. Wow, good memory. And, and I that's, think they actually have like glow-in-the-dark paint colors and stuff that you could buy. It's never worked with them. No. Glad I could fake it. Those are the, some of the extras one that you can make with the bits and pieces. The armor and the helmets, the skull helmets. It looks to me like there's enough to glue about 50 models together. Oh yeah, there's tons more. Yeah, you got sprues and sprues left over still. Do you still have the sprues? Or they might be lying around here somewhere. You actually gave me back the sprues because... Did I? You were frustrated and you <laughs> said something along the lines of, F this, I'm not <laughs> gluing these. Now you've changed your mind. You want to go back and, and <laughs> yeah, glue I wanna, them. I wanna, yeah, I want to glue them. Yeah. Bring them over next week. <laughs> the, I will do that. I will do that. I've used these miniatures a number of times. On the right, we have Reaper miniatures. On the left, hassle-free miniatures. Hassle-free? I don't think I've ever heard of that miniature company. I'm not sure a lot of people have in the U.S., but they make absolutely outstanding miniatures, and you can get her in two poses. There's oh, wow. that pose, and then there is also the spellcasting pose. This is Reaper Dark Heaven line, which is the premier figures. They're a little bit larger. They have larger bases. The one on the right, which was featured very prominently in early episodes of the show, we broke his arm. I've displayed it here with the missing arm. The shelf came unglued from the wall, 
and a bunch of my miniatures were broken. I have a soldering iron now, so I could probably huh. do a better job of securing that <laughs> you arm. You probably just buy another one. Okay, these are the ladies of our group. So the interesting thing about our gaming group is it's mostly women. So that's one of the reasons I have a lot of female miniatures, and I feature them and always have prominently in Dungeon Craft. I'm particularly proud of the middle one, that's Veronica's character, because of the stand. I made that stand. Oh, that, right. that was custom made. Yeah. Stand, yeah. These are the right to our Reaper Dark Heaven legends. You remember these, right? Well, I know the one on the left. We must have a dozen of those lying around because every time you ordered from Reaper for a couple month period, you'd get that guy as a free bonus. So we have tons of those guys lying around. We actually have a ton of Reaper miniatures lying around, probably more Reapers than anything else. I think they're one of the best miniature companies. Well, I think that's also a testament to their website. It's so easy to navigate, really. That's right, they have that figure finder, so you can put in what kind of figure you want, and it will find it for you. A wide variety to choose from. Also, some of the best sculptors in the business, I think. Absolutely, without question. So far, we've looked at metal miniatures, but let's take a look at Reaper's Bones line. They're made of plastic. Here we have a good wizard and an evil wizard, and they're both Reaper Bones. You yeah. want to talk about the virtues of Reaper Bones? Can't say enough good things about these guys. They're super affordable. You're going to inevitably drop your figures, or one of your <laughs> Cheeto Fingers players is going to drop your blades and uh, staffs over time. These, you don't ever have to worry about them. You know, those staffs are always going to bounce right back. He's going to... It's Buddy. Another Bones. This is Max Mannheim. I use him in my Caves of Carnage campaign. A very versatile figure. He's a bandit leader, but this one you customize, I remember. It did not come with a shield. Let's take another look at it. And that is a skull ring. Like a Halloween skull oh, yeah, ring. A little, yeah, it looks great. It's like a little rusted red color. I love it. I don't remember this guy. That's a carrion crawler. I just picked that up from Bones. They make great monsters, too. Cool, mini, or not, these are from the Massive Darkness game. Yeah, these are some of the best figures out there, I think. All the... Uh, cloth on the figures have all these little holes and stuff in it and stitching on it. They give it a really realistic look. Fun to paint. The thing I love about them is the clothes. They are so dynamic, these poses. They really look like they're moving. Yes, and also the belts. They all have these little utility belts and pouches and stuff on them. They look like real adventures. They're like gritty, gritty looking adventures. Yeah, you can see from the back on that that barbarian figure that just looks great some of our favorite miniatures to paint yeah i wish they had more you know sculpts and, and availability amazing these are dwarfs and orcs from our episode where we painted 70 miniatures from massive darkness in just seven hours your thoughts that was fun and again that they're, they're really easy to paint there's only like five colors or so on those figures and they look fantastic and you put the, the uh, wash on it, it looks dynamic the wash we used was Army Painter Strong Tone Quick Shade, and that was the secret weapon. Oh, yeah. it, it not only protects the miniature, but it enables you to get these incredible shading effects. These are from Cadwallon City of Thieves by Dust Games Fantasy Flight. They look pretty good. They're really compatible with the uh, cool mini or not miniatures, too. Yeah, they're all the same size, and the orc on the end I've used on the Dungeon Craft Show, and a lot of people have asked me where I got them from. There are a whole bunch of figures. I think there are four teams of four miniatures. It comes with about 20 miniatures, and they're all well sculpted. Oh, wow. Interesting. All right. Games Workshop, one of the most popular makers of miniatures, and these swordsmen, I, I don't remember. Oh, yeah, they were two-handed swordsmen. I remember they were pewter. They were really fun to paint. A lot of detail. And these are some guardsmen or mercenaries from the Mordheim set which came out about 15 years ago maybe more and Games Workshop really has a high level of detail the grooves and the folds are really deep enabling a, a very unskilled painter to do a pretty good job I was not nearly the painter I am now that guy's I made him look like Daniel Day Lewis from Gangs in New York and that's old Bill <laughs> that's my Shakespeare my insane Shakespeare guy but all Games Workshop minis 
are so easy to paint. I agree. Yeah, very cool. Fun to paint. Fun to put together, too. These are some old ones from the 1980s on the right is Deathbringer, and the ones on the left my buddy gave me along with Warhammer Castle, and I'm pretty sure that they're Games Workshop. Oh, that was the Styrofoam Castle, right? That, yeah, that's yeah. a st yeah, Styrofoam Castle. Of course, Deathbringer, that classic 80s look that those figures have. Yeah, people like Deathbringer. You don't get figures like that anymore. The classic 80s slash 90s dwarf with a mohawk and nose ring, punk rock. Yeah, it's Gotrick Gurnison from Warhammer. And I've actually repainted this figure, just gone over it a number of times. These are more modern Games Workshop models. They're both plastic. Yeah, I bought those on eBay. There are like 10 or 12 of those guys. Are they Berserkers? I don't even know what they're called. Chaos Warriors? I also bought the Space Marines on eBay for the ultimate sci-fi terrain video that not too many people saw. <laughs> but Came out really good, though. I like that. If you enjoy this music, incidentally, it was made by Michael Gelfi, who is composing the fullest and most immersive ambiance collection for D&D. &D. He already has 300 ambiances exclusively on his channel. If you want to download this track and others, Dungeon Craft viewers get 5% off by using the code Dungeon Craft on his store, www.michaelgelfi.bandcamp.com, and you'll find the link below. These are WizKids. WizKids Pathfinder Goblins. The second from the left is pre-painted, right? And the others have got to be you painted them. That is correct. If you look at that paint job, it's pretty good. That is pretty good, I must say. Uh, For a pre-painted figure, that's impressive. But it's cheaper than buying the unpainted ones and painting them. Yeah, yeah. And this is our bar staff. This is the WizKids guys. Nice detail on them. I modeled one after the St. Pauli girl and the other <laughs> after Esmeralda from Disney's Hunchback of Notre Dame. They don't have the level of sculpting. No, they're not as dynamic as Cool Mini or not or anything like that, but mm. they're definitely good. They're workable. It's a good value. Here's the Munchburger Brothers. They're also WizKids. WizKids. Did that one come with the that stand where he's standing on the Yes, trunk? where he's st standing on the chest. Yeah, that's one of their better ones. The what were these billed as? Just townsfolk or? Merchants. Merchants. They are okay. merchants. So if you're just getting into the hobby, you want to learn your craft, or you have a child that's interested in painting, WizKids are a good way to go. My son Michael, he painted the skeleton on the left. It was one of his first miniatures. And they also have the exclusive licenses to produce miniatures for Dungeons and & Dragons and Pathfinder, so you'll see many of the traditional monsters, such as this owl bear. These are by a great small company called Pulp Figures, and I use them in my adaptation of Poe's The Telltale Heart. These police officers were painted by my friend Jay, and this was his first time painting miniatures ever. Amazing. What a great job, man. I think if the miniatures are better, they're going to turn out better. Yeah. You know, now, these people don't do like uh, medieval or fantasy stuff, just uh, pulp era stuff? Yeah, so if you have a Call of Cthulhu game, they're really great. Also used in the Telltale Heart, the video that no one has seen, <laughs> but I will include a link to at the end of this because... <laughs> it is a good one. It, it took is really well done. two weeks of my life to do that video. These are by Dark Sword Miniatures, an outstanding company. They have lines based on the artwork of Jeff Easley and Larry Elmore and more artists, and they are really outstanding sculpts. They only sculpt in metal, and you can see on the left-hand side that Cleric has a little bit of chipping at her base, which tends to happen with metal. And yes, I've dull-coated it, lacquered it, sealed it, but if you play with a miniature, it's inevitably going to occur. However, metal gives you a higher level of detail and resolution, so it's always a trade-off. Privateer Press, these are the Murder Crows. It's a gruesome looking lot. Do you have to glue anything on that? I think a couple of them had to be glued. I'm really impressed with the sculpts and the level of detail. There's a lot of bandages, like a lot of cloths, and it's really easy to see where the folds are. Yeah. If you're a regular viewer, you will recognize these Watchmen. I think the sculptor has a great sense of humor. These are by Miniature Building Authority as is these townsfolk. A lot of my townsfolk are by Miniature Building Authority. They also make great miniature terrain, like the building with the blue door you see directly behind. These are the Gloomhaven minis, right? That is correct. I did these on a commission. All oh, right. Are these plastic or what? They are plastic, and they did not need to be assembled, unlike Kingdom Death. But also unlike Kingdom Death, they were very difficult to paint. These sculpts 
I found they were very difficult to work with. With Gloomhaven, they wanted to make non-traditional fantasy races, so there are a lot of furry things and rocky <laughs> things, yeah, and I'm not... And it, they were really difficult to paint. That guy on the left, in particular, what is that thing on his shoulder? It's like purple. <laughs> I'm not really sure. You could see that padding isn't very well molded. Yeah, no. So it's not clear as to what I was painting. And I found it a, a pretty difficult oh, experience, wow. although some of them came out pretty good. Yeah, and the left there looks pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, some of them turned out better than others when I could figure out what exactly was going on. But I think there's too many furry and rocky things in this game. I'm still fond of the guy on the right-hand side, but if you're a new painter, I'd stay away from Gloomhaven. So this one, I have a whole oh. bunch of miniatures. <laughs> this is my Frankenstein one. Now, the Frankenstein came with, like, the TSR game or something? That's a flesh golem from the Ravenloft board game. The guy with the torch is what? He and the screaming victim come from an old Ravenloft Dr. Mordenheim's laboratory set. Now, the Dr. Frankenstein, that's Hero Forge, right? You are correct. And I have several Hero Forge miniatures. Hero Forge makes custom miniatures. <laughs> oh, wow, and you can look at see that. I have a Hamlet. <laughs> I have the Bastard Duval, your, your character. And myself. <laughs> <laughs> my friend Gene got that for my birthday. That one is much smaller, although Hamlet one is much larger. The other two seem to be in scale. I'm glad that you mentioned that. Most 25mm minis are really 28mm. Yeah. So you have to make your Hero Forge mini as tall as possible. Oh, interesting. And this is my favorite miniature, Mrs. Professor Dungeon Master, also courtesy of Hero Forge. And Mrs. Dungeon Master is here. What do you think of your miniature? Your likeness. Maybe maybe 20 years ago, <laughs> it looks more like that. Uh, I think it looks a lot like you. I, she has green eyes like you. I, mm -hmm. I thought I did a good job. No, she does, but I'm not that skinny anymore. But that's okay. The only thing I would say that I noticed is that uh, when you look at it from the side, you notice that the hand is quite large compared to the rest of her body. But uh, also, I, I'm not sure I would want to fight in a bikini and, and sandals. Well, that's, that's a plus six bikini. And... <laughs> Re regarding the hands, I agree. They're a little out of proportion, and these are constructive criticisms for this company because I think they're great. I like this particular skirt because the longer ones don't really have a drape. They don't really have a flow. They're very triangular, and there's very limited footwear. It's very, very chunky. The options the last time I checked were the same as the men's, so i just like to see a little more variety there. I think I had boots like that in the 80s. <laughs> Well, there you have it. That's her criticism, and Mrs. Professor Dungeon Master, thanks so much for stopping by today. Anytime. Thanks, Adhesive Tom. It was a fun trip down memory lane. It was a good time. And thanks to Buddy the Cat. <laughs> yeah, he's walking all over the computer and through our massive army of minis. So. This is why you want Bones miniatures, so when he knocks them over, <laughs> so your cat does you knock do not over. break the weapons off them. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, like it, and share it on social media. Questions, comments, you can put them below. Also below, you'll find links to Facebook and our Patreon page. Once again, for Dungeon Craft, I'm Professor Dungeon Master. Thanks for spending this time with me. I'll see you next week. And until then, may all your rolls be 20s. Deathbringer again from the World Games Workshop destroyed. You fools, you finally did it. Damn you, damn you all to hell and watch more Dungeon Craft. <laughs>